as you can see, it is, it's still winter time in Kenora. And that means there's still ice fishing to be done. I'm heading out this afternoon with my buddy Darcy Cox. You've seen him in past videos. He's a multi-species angler. He's a musky guide here on Lake of the Woods. And as well as a musky guru, he, he knows a thing or two about big pike. So we're going ice fishing, tip up fishing for pike. Uh, typically March, April is kind of prime time for pike through the ice. But we're gonna see if the pike are starting to move to the back of the bays. Uh, we're gonna be soaking some big baits. We're gonna hopefully, I'm gonna try to set up the aqua view and see if we can get some underwater strikes. So that's the goal. But before we get going, I need to tell you guys, today's video is sponsored by Fishbrain. And if you have not heard about Fishbrain, you've been living under a rock because Fishbrain is the number one rated fishing app on iOS and Android. It is free to download and it has a bunch of different features. Basically, it is, it's kind of like Instagram for fishermen. It's just fish. For someone like me, when I flip through Instagram, pretty much all I want to see is fish pictures. So fish brain is just that. And, and there's so many more layers to it. When you post a fish picture, you can choose to share the lure you caught it with, the time of day, the lake, the specific spot on the lake. You can share as much info or as little info as you want. So for an angler who's traveling around in a new area, it's a great resource to, to get started. As well, it's a great way to network with other anglers. When I got into fishing, the message boards were thing, the forums. This is before Facebook was a thing. And that's where I connected with some of my best buddies. That's where I met Aaron Weeb through the fishing message boards. And now with Fishbrain, you can do the same thing. You can find, you know, like-minded anglers in your area, find yourself fishing buddies so you don't have to go by yourself. That is another cool aspect of it. There's a built-in weather app that follows you where you're at and it gives you even the wind hour by hour in your area. So just to have everything that you need for fishing in one location, in one app is pretty sweet. Make sure you follow me on there. I'll follow you back. I've been posting some of my catches and uh, it's just a good place for anglers to connect. So there's a download link below. It is free to download. There's a premium version that gives you a couple more features, gives you the exact spots where people have caught their fish if they decide to share that info. And uh, I highly recommend checking it out. So thank you to Fishbrain. I'm gonna hit the road and go pick up Darcy and we're hopefully gonna ice some big pike. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the grind with Darcy. He's my good luck charm. Grinding. Last, last time we had, that was my best ice fishing trip of the winter, the big crappies. Not mine, I do that all the time. Darcy does it all the time. Today we are something a little more in Darcy's wheelhouse. We're going for big Esox, big northern pike. It's, uh, it's getting close to March, but it doesn't feel like March. March is prime time for big pike. It's when the lakes start to lose that covering of snow on top. The pike start to push up to the creeks. And we're fishing a creek mouth today, but it's it's not feeling like, that is a couple feet of snow. Um, so it's, it's not feeling too prime time right now, but uh, we'll give it a shot to see if they're, they're still here. Up. They should be here. They should be here still. We'll see what's up. All right, tip up spike. Darcy says, I'm gonna drill the holes today. Yes. I don't know why, but I will. Cause I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> wait Darcy, wait, 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 wait. You can't run, your body hurts. <laughs> I'll give you the first one because I like you. This is what the big ones do. So what's your shaggy right now, Darcy? Ooh, oh, oh, it's ripping. Yep. <laughs> Darcy's on. First spike of the day. Kneel down, buddy. Get in here. Oh, that's a good head shake. Not bad, not bad. Oh, oh that's a good start. Not bad. Come here, buddy. <laughs> All right. You know, we're gonna catch any. Cool, yep. <laughs> First flag. There's a couple around, that's all right. That's all right. She's been caught before. That tall flag was pretty nice to see. Yeah, no doubt, eh? Show me one more time. All right. Nice. That'll do for the first one. Right back down. Gone. Sweet. All right, buddy. It'll work. For someone who has never used a tip up before, explain what a tip up even is because it's a foreign object to our friends down south. So this is a tip up, um, really easy unit. It's just got a spool on the bottom, rod that goes up to the top that uh, spins up here. So uh, when the fish takes it, uh, you lock these guys in place like this. Uh, when the fish takes it, boom, flag goes up, run it over, put it to the side. And uh, once he's going away from you, you want to uh, stop him dead. Uh, you know, you don't want to go too crazy. Give it a, uh, a nice hook set and uh, reel him hand over hand with the uh, line and boom. That's it. Number that's one, it. we don't even have our tip up set yet. So, Hooray. 
Something to keep in mind when you're tip up fishing, today isn't a windy day. When it's a windy day, line management is something you wanna think about because you don't have drag. So when you're using a tip up, however you lay that line, if that fish decides to take a run and you give it the, the tension with your fingers, you need to let that line go. So if you make a big mess, a big pile and it's windy, it'll end up turning into a big knot, might end up breaking off. So just think about how you're laying your line. We'll show you guys the rig we're using. It's called the Quick Strike Rig. But for now, Derek's just gonna put the bait back down and we're gonna get back to the sled and put our last line in. But good start Yay. to some mid-February piking. I wish you guys could experience how deep this snow is. This is, this is special. Here's our command station right now. Bit of a mess, but this is something I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. It's called an iFish Pro. It's, it's kind of a new age tip up. Basically allows you to use your rod. And here we got the aqua view. You can see our bait sitting down there. So hopefully we're gonna get a strike. Got the recording set up over there. And we're hoping to see a pike flip that flag. Darcy, this one's yours. All right, let's go. <laughs> It's like number two, still haven't gotten our fourth line in yet. The shallowest hole with the most action. Oh, she came off there, darn. Darcy! Boo! Still got the base? No! Oh. All right. Gross. You're fixing that one. <laughs> Before we get too many more fish going on, I wanna show you guys what we're using. Uh, like Darcy explained before, Tip Up uh, is a very basic rig. Uh, they're inexpensive, you can get cheap ones for about 15 bucks. Some of these uh, more expensive ones, 40 to $50. It's tough to beat a big hunk of meat for a big pike. You can jig lures, you'll get big fish, but a big saucy mama like this is gonna catch you your biggest fish. Pike have a very strong sense of smell. They want a big meal, and this is a Cisco that I caught crappie fishing earlier this year. And this is pike candy right here. The rig we're using is called a quick strike rig. There's a couple different ways to make them. This one is essentially a piece of wire with two treble hooks. The one on the back is crimped in. The one in the middle is free sliding. This one rests pretty horizontal, which is good. Nice natural presentation. We're gonna set it up. We're fishing anywhere from nine feet to two feet of water under the ice, so pretty shallow. Um, I was surprised that both of our flags have came in the shallowest hole because it's just typically the trend for pike is they're moving shallower and they're getting ready to set up in that creek for spawning in the springtime. So you would think now being February, they'd be a little deeper. Both of our flags have come in the shallowest hole. Tells you, I don't know anything, but uh, two flags, a good sign. We've only been fishing for about an hour. It's getting close to March, which is prime time for big pike. So there's an alternative to the tip up. This is called the iFish Pro. Um, are made in Minnesota by a buddy of mine, Levi. We've used these before on uncut angling for a little bit of everything, but today we're using them for pike. Basically, this allows you to use your rod and reel while you're fishing. It's kind of cool to battle the fish on rod and reel. The biggest downside about these is if you're fishing in wicked cold weather, they do freeze pretty bad. They don't have the same insulation. So this is the bobber stop here. This plastic piece comes with the iFish Pro, and then this is the bobber stop I tied on. It's just a piece of line. So that's gonna that's where I mark my depth. Now I'm gonna slide it on here. Slide it over the hole. This is where the magic happens. You fold the flag down and you lock it in. That's where my line is, same mechanics, it's gonna pull sideways, that flag's gonna pop off and that clip falls off, so. Very similar. And then here's what makes the iFish Pro awesome is we're using a rod and reel with it. So you don't have to do the same hand-to-hand -hand combat with the rod in the rod holder. When that fish pulls it, I got the bale open, which is important. If you want the bale open, you're gonna be in trouble. And then I'm gonna pick it up, close the bale, and fight that fish with rod and reel, so. Cool alternative. Yeah, we got two tip-ups, two iFish pros out. Uh, we were allowed two lines each, so always take advantage of that. And we're gonna go watch underwater camera and see if we can watch that pike eat the bait. Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay, I was uh, trying to test out this 
sonar and my bait just got picked up. It wasn't even in the tip up. It hasn't swam though, that's the thing. So when you're setting the hook on a fish with one of these big baits, you want to wait till he's swimming because he could otherwise just be sitting there. You can see he's taking line now. So you want him to be swimming away because then you know when you set the hook, you're gonna rip him into the back. He might have dropped it. No. Nice. Got him. Nice. There we go. We are hooked up. I don't think it's big, but fighting a pike on the rod is pretty awesome. It's kind of just, oh geez. Okay, maybe not, maybe not. Oh. <laughs> it's got some weight. Yeah. Oh. Hand to hand combat. What do we got? We got a little gator. Not as big as Darcy's, but hey, it's good to be on the board. That fish got me in the weeds. A nice size pike right there, folks. Good J size pike. <laughs> that is a J size pike. All right, long pliers, key, little blood on this fish, so we're gonna get him back real quick. If I was eating pike, that would be a good size to eat for a little pike stir fry. She's actually got a pretty, I think she's been eaten before. Chomped by good. something. Got a good, good bite mark. <laughs> and she gone. There we go, two pike on the board. For an afternoon effort, I'm happy with that so far. I'm looking forward to capturing underwater strike yet. I hope it doesn't get tangled into the underwater camera. Oh, it's just tearing. Oh, oh yeah, let's stop. Oh, come on. Can you kneel down? No. No, he's still there. He's still there. He's still there. Jimmy, she's not there. Oh. She's not there. She's still there, Darcy. She's, she's still there. there. It's oh, one. oh man. <laughs> That's brutal. Darn. That was spinning. Guys, this is the hole that we moved the underwater camera to. Three of our four fish or bites have come at this hole. We're going to review the footage. Oh man. Darn. That looked decent when you set the hook. Yeah, it stopped me pretty good. Brennan. Okay. Another flag. I was moving tip ups. We're rolling. Ready to go? So Darcy. She's just crawling right now. Now I'm the one out of breath. I'm gonna just beat her a little bit. Put this down over here. Oh. I'm gonna switch that. You hit him whenever you need to. Okay. Yep, we're good to go. She's cruising. Oh. Come on. Yeah! <laughs> Gone. Gone though. That's gonna be some fantastic footage. Hope so. Of a fish that's the same size as the bait. <laughs> this is making me feel so out of shape. So what we're doing right now, nice thing about tip-ups is you can spread them pretty far apart. I think it's, I think it's 60 yards in Ontario. We're not even close to that. But the nice thing is you make your spread and you can see which flags are going up. You can experiment with depths because we'd some in 10 feet, some in two feet. Now we've seen the shallower ones are going up the most. So that's where we're moving the flags and trying to put all the tip-ups in high percentage areas. That's how we want the bait looking. Horizontal, shimmering. You can see how that just glows in that dark water. He's one of the top people that I would go into business oh, with. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Oh, oh boy, here we go. This is the tip-up we just moved. Got some weight? Oh no. No, Darcy. No, again. Ah, these fish keep falling off. No, he's still there. He's still there. <laughs> what do we got? There. Come on, big head. Oh, not bad, not bad, not bad. We'll take it. Okay. Show right. me that one. Yeah, not bad, not bad. That's long. Yeah. Skinny, but long. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. In the weeds, as you can see, this was the shallowest hole yet. For the release. 
Gonzo. Con. Nice. Well, hasn't been fast and furious, but for February pike fishing. Yeah, not bad at all. So that last fish was kind of cool because that's what we were speaking about is watching your flags and seeing where the fish are coming from. We realized the fish were coming from our shallowest holes. We moved our deepest tip up to the shallowest spot and caught another fish. So very good. As, as, as you might be able to tell, Darcy and I are kind of spoiled with pike fishing. We have, Darcy still guides, I used to guide. And you catch, I don't know, I would say benchmark is more so 40 inches, right? Yeah. 40 inches is just a mark that people have in their head for big pike. Um, like trophy in Manitoba is 41 inches of master angler length. And you get that number in your head and it can actually kind of ruin fishing sometimes. Like there's times where I guided where a kid didn't know that 40 was the number and he caught a 35 inch pike and it was the greatest thing ever. And I've also guided where people had that 40 inch number stuck in their head and it absolutely ruined the fish for them because it was 39 inches. Remember that at the end of the day, the numbers do not matter. It is about catching fish. If that is your biggest fish, enjoy it because if you fish as much as Darcy and I, you will become jaded eventually. But no, it's, it's good. Enjoy every fish. We got about an hour left and then we're gonna call it a day. But for a half day of pike fishing, nothing wrong with that. And by the way, Darcy's now guiding for average size pikes in the winter time. 1-800-AverageSizePikes.com. We're calling it a day. What do you think, Darcy? Yeah, buddy. Couple, Good to go. Couple average size pikes? Yeah, yeah, not bad for a couple hours. Middle of February. Exactly, it is, it is not prime time for pike yet. You want when that snow is almost off the ice. It is very far from that right now. But uh, awesome day in Sunset Country. Darcy Cox, multi-species guide. Hit him up if you want to fish in the Kenora area. And that's a wrap. See you next time. Thanks for watching.